Have you ever wondered what happened to every first overall pick from the 1990s? It was a decade filled with new expansion teams, stellar young talent, and a ton of drama to say the least. In retrospect, not every team used their first overall pick wisely, but you can be the judge of that. Here's what happened to every first overall NHL draft pick from the 1990s. Owen Nolan, the Quebec Nordiques, 1990. Owen Nolan was selected number one by the Quebec Nordiques at the 1990 NHL Draft after he scored 51 goals in 58 games during his second season with Cornwall of the OHL. He made the Nordiques as an 18-year-old in the 1990-91 season, but scored three goals and 13 points in 59 games. Not the best start, but Owen Nolan then scored 42 goals and 73 points and had 183 penalty minutes in that following season, establishing himself as a true power forward. He followed that with 36 goals and 77 points in the 92-93 season, helping the Nordiques qualify for the Stanley Cup playoffs for the first time since the 86-87 season. Injuries limited Nolan to six games in the 93-94 season, but he was healthy again in the 94-95 season and helped the Nordiques finish first in the Eastern Conference by scoring 30 goals during the lockout shortened season. He then moved with the Nordiques to Denver in the summer of 95, but the renamed Colorado Avalanche traded him to the San Jose Sharks on October 26, 1995. Nolan is probably best remembered for his called shot at the 1997 NHL All-Star Game while he was a member of the hometown Sharks. He had already scored two goals in the game when he raced in alone against the Eastern Conference goalie Dominic Hasek. He pointed at the top right corner and beat Hasek with a shot inside the post. Nolan played eight seasons with San Jose and set NHL career highs in goals with 44 and points with 84 in the 99-2000 season. He scored at least 20 goals six times for the Sharks before he was traded to the Toronto Maple Leafs on March 5, 2003. He remained with the Maple Leafs through the 2003-2004 season, then missed the 05-06 season after having knee surgery. After scoring 16 goals for the Coyotes in the 06-07 season, Nolan played one more season with the Calgary Flames and two with the Minnesota Wild, where he scored his 400th NHL goal against the San Jose Sharks March 10th of 2009. Leaving the NHL, Nolan then played in Switzerland during the 2010-2011 season before retiring on February 7th, 2012 after signing a one-day contract with the Sharks. Nolan finished his career with 422 goals, 463 assists, and 1,793 penalty minutes over 1,200 games, as well as 40 points in 65 playoff games. He also helped Canada end a 50-year Olympic gold medal drought in 2002. Eric Lindros, the Quebec Nordiques, 1991. Eric Lindros was perhaps one of the most watched junior hockey players in history. At just 18 years old, he was 6 foot 4, 225 pounds. With a blend of dominant skill and overwhelming size and strength, many had pegged him as the next great NHL superstar, following closely in the footsteps of Wayne Gretzky and Mario Lemieux. Taken by the Quebec Nordiques with the first pick of the 1991 NHL Draft, Lindros resisted signing with the club. He spent the 1991-92 season playing junior hockey and skating for Canada at the 1992 World Junior Championship and the 1992 Olympics. Lindros reiterated to the Nordiques that he would play outside the NHL in the 1992-93 season and re-enter the draft in 1993. Faced with the possibility of losing Lindros with no compensation, the Nordiques began entertaining offers for Lindros' rights. Then came June 20th, 1992, which marked one of the strangest days in NHL history. Just prior to the start of the NHL draft, the Nordiques were caught trading the rights to Eric Lindros twice, first to the Philadelphia Flyers and then to the New York Rangers. After a week-long arbitration process, the result was the biggest trade in NHL history, which saw Lindros' rights awarded to the Flyers in exchange for six players, two draft picks, and $15 million. Then, on October 13, 1992, Lindros played in his first NHL game against the Quebec Nordiques. Lindros lit them up with a pair of goals, and you can imagine how angry this made the Quebec fans. From the time he broke into the NHL with the Philadelphia Flyers in the 92-93 season to his final season with them in the 99-2000 season, Eric Lindros averaged 1.36 points per game. 
only Mario Lemieux and Yeremir Yager averaged more. Lindros centered John Leclerc and Mikael Renberg on what they called the Legion of Doom line. He also won the Hart Trophy as the NHL's most valuable player in the 94-95 season and led the Stanley Cup playoffs with 26 points in 19 games in the 96-97 season when the Flyers made it to the finals. Lindros averaged 1.14 points per game in the playoffs with the Flyers. Although Lindros gave a lot to the Philadelphia franchise, him and his parents often clashed with Flyers management and he was stripped of his captaincy in the 99-2000 season. Lindros missed 140 games during his 8 seasons with the Flyers, that's almost a quarter of their games. He sustained his 6th concussion in 27 months when Devils defenseman Scott Stevens caught him with his head down and put a shoulder into his jaw in the first period of Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals in the 2000 postseason. He had come back from a concussion after a 10-week absence and scored a goal in Game 6 trying to keep the Flyers from blowing a 3-1 series deficit only to suffer this devastating hit. After this occurred, Lindros would never play for the Flyers again, and he would also never return to his elite level of play ever again. He sat out the 2000-2001 season in a contract dispute with the Flyers and was traded to the Rangers. Lindros had 73 points in 72 games with the Rangers and won a gold medal with Canada at the Salt Lake City Olympics in the 2001-2002 season. Then he played two more seasons with the Rangers, one more with the Toronto Maple Leafs and one with the Dallas Stars. Eric Lindros retired at the age of 33 having played 760 regular season games and 53 playoff games in the NHL and unfortunately never winning the Stanley Cup. His final regular season totals are 372 goals, 493 assists, calculating to 865 points and 1,398 penalty minutes. Eric Lindros was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 2016. Roman Hammerlich, the Tampa Bay Lightning, 1992. Roman Hammerlich was the first player ever drafted by the Tampa Bay Lightning with the number one pick in the 1992 NHL Draft. He stepped into the NHL as an 18-year-old and finished with 21 points in 67 games in the expansion team's first season. Hammerlich had his best offensive season with 65 points in the 95-96 season, helping the Lightning get into the Stanley Cup playoffs for the first time. But the Tampa Bay Lightning traded him to the Edmonton Oilers on December 30th, 1997. Hammerlich played three seasons with the Oilers. He also became an Olympic gold medalist in 1998 when he was part of the Czech Republic team that defeated Russia 1-0 in the championship game in Japan. The Oilers traded Hammerlich to the New York Islanders on June 24, 2000. He had four solid seasons with the Islanders, matching his NHL career high with 16 goals in the 2000-2001 season and helping the Islanders make the playoffs three times while averaging more than 25 minutes of ice time per game. The Calgary Flames signed Hammerlick on August 14, 2005, and after two seasons with them, he then moved on to the Montreal Canadiens in 2007. Four years later, he signed with the Washington Capitals, then finished his NHL career by playing 12 games with the New York Rangers after being claimed off waivers during the 2012-2013 season. Roman Hammerlick retired October 21, 2013 with 638 points in 1,395 NHL games, as well as 41 points in 113 playoff games played. Alexander Daig, the Ottawa Senators, 1993. I'm glad I got drafted first because no one remembers number two. That's a quote coming from Alexander Daig after he was selected first overall at the 1993 NHL draft in Quebec City. He could not be more wrong. People do remember number two because it was Chris Pronger who is in the Hockey Hall of Fame. Some even remember Chris Gradden, selected third, who played more than 1,000 games in the NHL. Paul Correa was number four. We also remember him. And a quick show of hands, how many of you remember the fifth pick, Viktor Kozlov, whose pro career in the NHL and KHL spanned 25 seasons? Alexander Daig came into the league after collecting 247 points in one 119 QMJHL games for the Victoriaville Tigers. He was so highly touted that the Quebec Nordiques offered players like Owen Nolan, Peter Forsberg, and Ron Hextall as well as draft picks in order to draft the next great French Canadian. But the Senators refused and selected Alexander Daig as their top pick. In his first season, he potted 20 goals and collected a career-high 51 points. 
However, it's safe to say he never blossomed into that player that he was supposed to be. He was given a massive five-year contract worth $12.5 million to start his career, which later led to the entry-level contract salary cap, and after all that money, he seemed to never give enough effort on the ice. The finest offensive season of his career came in the 96-97 season when he scored 26 goals along with 25 assists to equal his career high in points at 51. Dag finished third on the team in scoring behind Yashin with 75 and Daniel Alfredson with 71. The Senators would also make the playoffs for the very first time that season since their 1992-93 inception. In 301 regular season games as a Senator, Alexander Dag scored 74 goals and 98 assists, putting up 172 points, but was an abysmal minus 137. While his offensive numbers were certainly not terrible, they were a far cry from what was expected of him. Scoring just 7 goals and 9 assists through 38 games in Ottawa in the 97-98 season, the Senators shipped him off to the Philadelphia Flyers on January 17, 1998. Alexander Daig really fared no better with the Flyers. After coming over in the trade, he generated a decent 17 assists along with 9 goals for 26 points in 37 games. Additionally, he played in all 5 postseason games with the Flyers as they would lose 4 games to 1 to the Buffalo Sabres. The 1998-99 season would go very much the same as the one prior. Alexander Daig scored a mere 3 goals and 2 assists in 31 games for the Flyers, which prompted them to trade him on January 29, 1999, in which ended up being a 3-way trade. Daig was traded to the Edmonton Oilers to bring Andre Kovalenko to the Philadelphia Flyers. However, the Oilers then shipped Daig to Tampa Bay where he would finish the season scoring 6 goals and 6 assists in 32 games for the Lightning. The start of the 1999-2000 season would see him traded one final time. Tampa Bay opted to trade Daig on October 3, 1999 to the New York Rangers for future considerations. This would be his final NHL season before taking a hiatus from hockey at the age of 25. He played 58 games for the Rangers that season, scoring 8 goals and 18 assists for 26 points. After taking a two-year hiatus, he endeavored to make a comeback by offering his services to a variety of teams for the 2002-2003 season. The Pittsburgh Penguins would then sign Dig as a free agent on August 13, 2002. He would split the season between the parent club in Pittsburgh and their American Hockey League affiliate, the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins. Dag's 33 games in Pittsburgh saw him score 4 goals and 3 assists for 7 points. Spending the majority of his time in the AHL, Dag was nearly a point per game player. He potted 9 goals and 29 assists for 38 points in 40 games played. On September 30th, 2003, Dag signed as a free agent with the Minnesota Wild. Having impressed the coaching staff enough upon his arrival, he was inserted into the regular lineup for the Wild and ultimately put together the finest overall season of his career. The 2003-2004 season saw Dag appear in 78 of Minnesota's 82 games. He ended up being the team's most consistent player. Daig led the Wild in scoring with 51 points in 78 games, the third time in his career that he reached his career high. His 20 goals were also the most among all Minnesota scorers. After the lockout canceled the 2004-2005 NHL season, Alexander Daig was back with Minnesota once more when the league reconvened for the 2005-2006 season. Now at the age of 30, he could not string a follow-up season that closely matched the 2003-2004 season. After the 05-06 season came to a close, Alexander Daig would finish out his professional career playing four seasons in Switzerland. His final season was played in the 2009-2010 season, which he split between three different teams in the top Swiss National League. Now a lot of people call Alexander Daig a bust, however he did end up playing 616 NHL games collecting 327 points. Ed Jovanovski, the Florida Panthers, 1994. Ed Jovanovski played two seasons with the Windsor Spitfires of the OHL, earning first All-Star, second All-Star, and All-Rookie Team honors. He was then selected first overall in the 1994 NHL entry draft by the Florida Panthers. During his rookie NHL season, he earned All-Rookie Team honors and helped the Panthers advance to the Stanley Cup Finals, where they lost to the Colorado Avalanche. 
Ed Jovanovski became one of the first faces of the Florida Panthers franchise. The team's success seemed to mirror Jovanovski's arrival as it went from a 2022-6 record to making it to the Stanley Cup final in Jovanovski's rookie season. He was one of the first great homegrown Panther talents, and that showed in his rookie season. In the 1995-96 season, Ed Jovanovski scored 10 goals and 21 points over 70 games, making the NHL's all-rookie team and finishing third in the Calder Memorial Trophy voting and 16th in the James Norris Memorial Trophy voting. Jovo Cop, as Panther fans called him, followed up his stellar rookie campaign with a 7-goal, 23-point season at 20 years of age, playing through 61 games during the the 96-97 season. He also established himself as one of the most dominant physical defensemen in the league that year, becoming an absolute force in the defensive zone. However, he did not record a single point in the team's five-game first-round loss to the New York Rangers in the 1997 Stanley Cup playoffs. In his final full season during his first stint with the Panthers, Ed Jovanovski recorded 9 goals and 23 assists in 81 games played and Florida missed the playoffs for the first time in his career. In the 98-99 season, Jovanovski played 41 games recording 3 goals and 16 points before being shipped off to the Vancouver Canucks in a 7-player deal that sent Pavel Bure to Florida. During his tenure with Vancouver, he was awarded the Babe Pratt Trophy as the team's best defenseman for three consecutive years. He also led the club's defenseman in scoring four consecutive years as well. In July of 2006, Ed Jovanovski became an unrestricted free agent and signed with the Phoenix Coyotes. He led the team's defenseman in scoring during his first three years with the club. Jovanovski returned to the Panthers for three seasons before retiring in 2015. He returned for a second stint in the 2011-2012 offseason after signing a four-year contract to return to Florida. Like the 95-96 season, Jovanovski was the piece that put the Panthers into playoff contention. Florida made its first playoff appearance since the 99-2000 season and Jovanovski played a crucial role in that, scoring 3 goals and 13 points in 66 games, while continuing to be the defensive defenseman he was known to be. He didn't record a single point in the team's 7-game series loss to the New Jersey Devils in the 2012 Stanley Cup playoffs. In his next two seasons, Jovanovski he played just a combined 43 games recording one goal and six points before retiring. Brian Burrard, the Ottawa Senators 1995. After his spectacular rookie season in the OHL, at the 1995 NHL entry draft, Brian Burrard was selected first overall by the Ottawa Senators. However, he would never play an NHL game for them. Despite a strong showing at his first NHL training camp with Ottawa, the Senators' front office and Burrard's agent could not negotiate his rookie contract as the Senators couldn't afford to pay potential bonuses that he would have been eligible to receive. As a result, he decided to return to juniors in hopes that the Ottawa Senators would trade him somewhere else. Halfway through the NHL season, Burrard was finally traded as the Senators sent him to the New York Islanders in exchange for Damian Rhodes and Wade Redden. Burrard made his NHL debut in the 96-97 season with the New York Islanders. He achieved a career high in points during his rookie season, scoring 8 goals and adding 40 assists for 48 points in 82 games. The 6'2 defenseman also added to his hardware by winning the Calder Trophy as the NHL's Rookie of the Year. During his second season with the Islanders, GM Mike Milbury was shaking things up in Long Island as he traded away Brian McCabe and Todd Bertuzzi to the Vancouver Canucks in exchange for Trevor Linden. The season was tough for the team and Milbury pointed out deficiencies in Burrard's defensive side of the game. However, his numbers relatively mirrored his rookie season as he posted 14 goals and 32 assists for 46 points in 75 games played. By the 98-99 season, Burrard was feeling at home with the Islanders and never expected to be traded. However, Milbury had other plans for the team and on January 9th, 1999, he traded Burrard to the Toronto Maple Leafs in exchange for goaltender Felix Potvin. Burrard played 31 games for the Islanders until this trade, notching 4 goals and 11 assists. Burrard was an excellent addition to the strong Toronto Maple Leafs team. 
Following the trade, he continued to put up similar numbers, scoring 5 goals and adding 14 assists in 38 games. He also got his first taste of NHL playoff hockey as the Leafs advanced to the Eastern Conference Final that season. In 17 playoff games, he scored 1 goal and chipped in 8 assists. Berard looked as if he would be a mainstay on the Maple Leafs blue line for years to come when the infamous incident temporarily brought his career to a halt. In a game against the Ottawa Senators on March 11, 2000, Marion Hossa clipped Berard with a follow-through and the toe of his stick connected with his right eye, immediately dropping the Leafs defenseman. Berard suffered a pressure cut resulting in severe damage to his retina and nearly lost it entirely due to the incident. After seven surgeries on the eye in hopes of regaining enough vision to return to the NHL, Berard was finally given the go-ahead to start being active again as he made small steps working toward a potential return to the NHL. Berard reached a point where he was again in good shape and with some connections persuaded Herb Brooks to allow him to skate at the 2002 Team USA Olympic Team Training Camp. After that camp was finished, the defenseman was convinced that he could play in the NHL again. His abilities garnered the attention of the New York Rangers, who signed Berard to a pro trial contract ahead of the 2001-2002 season. He played well enough that it turned into a one-year, $2 million contract. However, the season demonstrated that Berard wasn't near the level of play he was before the injury, as he scored only two goals and added 21 assists in 82 games played. Following his comeback season, Berard signed a one-year deal with the Boston Bruins. His level of play began to return to levels seen before his eye injury. Playing in 80 games for the Bruins, he scored 10 goals and added 28 assists for 38 points. With Berard rediscovering his game, they were interested in retaining his services for the next season. However, when a deal could not be reached, he went to arbitration where he was awarded $2.51 million, a price too steep for the Bruins to pay. Now ahead of the 03-04 season, Berard found himself a free agent once again, and one week into the regular season, the Chicago Blackhawks signed him to a one-year, $2.01 million contract and named him the alternate captain. His season in Chicago saw offensive production hit high levels as he scored 13 goals and 34 assists for 47 points in just 58 games played. By season's end, he was named the recipient of the Bill Masterton Memorial Trophy. The 2004-2005 NHL lockout ended any hopes for Berard to return to the Blackhawks as Dale Talon had taken over as their new GM. Instead, the Columbus Blue Jackets came calling for Berard's services and signed him to a two-year contract. In his first season, he scored 12 goals and 20 assists. However, the 30-year-old began to develop chronic back problems and was limited to just 44 games. His back required surgery to repair herniated discs Discs, ending his 05-06 season. He played just 11 games for the Blue Jackets in the final year of his contract. Brian Burrard's career would come full circle as he returned to Long Island for what turned out to be his final NHL season. He played 54 games for the Islanders in the 2007-2008 season and scored 5 goals and 17 assists. With his back becoming a huge problem and receiving steady criticism from head coach Ted Nolan, Burrard knew his time was done in the NHL. By the age of 31, he had played in his last NHL game. After that, he actually headed over to the KHL for one more season before officially hanging up his skates. Chris Phillips, the Ottawa Senators, 1996. After being drafted first overall by the Ottawa Senators in 1996, Chris Phillips played 1,179 games for the team in a career that spanned nearly two decades. Although not known for his offensive talents, he ranks third in franchise history in points among defensemen with 288, as well as second in penalty minutes with 756. There are few players who mean as much to their team as Phillips does to the Ottawa Senators. Not only was he a talented player and reliable defensive defenseman, but he made a significant impact on the community, choosing to remain in the city after he retired in 2016. On February 18, 2020, the Senators on Honored Phillips by raising his number four to the rafters, only the third retired number by the organization, along with Frank Finnegan, number eight, and of course Alfredson, number 11. Phillips grew into one of the most respected leaders for the Senators. In the 2006 season, an A was officially stitched onto his jersey. He wore the letter proud for 10 seasons, the longest any Senator has ever served as the alternate captain. During his time there, he expressed a desire to be named captain after Alfredson left in 2013 and again when Jason Spezza left in 2014, saying, I'm capable and deserving and I want that responsibility. However, the C was given to Eric Carlson, which some fans still recall with some bitterness. 
Phillips struggled with injuries, causing him to miss 93 games, including over half of the 98-99 season. Still, he chipped in when he could, helping the team return to the playoffs each season, although they advanced to the second round just once over that time. In the 2001-2002 season, he joined forces with recent acquisition Zdeno Chara to form one of the most effective shutdown pairs in the NHL. The following season, with Phillips missing just four games and healthier than he had ever been in years, the tandem became even deadlier and the Senators set franchise records with 52 wins, 113 points, and 182 goals allowed. They cruised to first in the Eastern Conference and in the playoffs they continued to surge, defeating the Islanders in five games and the Philadelphia Flyers in six, advancing to the conference finals for the first time. However, the Devils took the series in seven games and went on to win the Stanley Cup, but without Phillips, it's unlikely the Senators would have been there in the first place. In his 20 seasons, he was never selected for an all-star team or won any individual awards, yet that was the way he played, always putting his team first and slipping under the radar. His physicality and consistency earned him the nickname Big Rig, which he accepted with pride and eventually named a microbrewery in Ottawa after the nickname. Despite his lack of accolades, he was a three-time member of the Canadian World Championship team, winning a silver medal in 2005 and 2009. Joe Thornton, the Boston Bruins, 1997. Known as Jumbo Joe, Thornton was acquired by the San Jose Sharks on November 30th, 2005 in a trade from the Boston Bruins. The 6'4 center was in his eighth season with the Bruins, who selected him number one overall in the 1997 NHL draft after he played two seasons with Sault Ste. Marie in the OHL and was named the Canadian Hockey League Rookie of the Year in the 95-96 season. Thornton was the Boston Bruins captain from the 2002-2005 season and in the 1999-2000 season, Joe Thornton led the team in goals with 23, assists with 37, points with 60, and penalty minutes with 82. In the 2002-2003 season, Joe Thornton joined Bobby Orr and Ken Hodge as the only Bruins to have 100 points and 100 penalty minutes in the same season. Moving to San Jose, Joe Thornton was an instant hit with the Sharks. He won the Art Ross Trophy as the NHL's top scorer in the 05-06 season where he had 125 points, becoming the first player to win the award after being traded during the season. Thornton also won the Hart Trophy as MVP. Thornton was the 11th player in NHL history to have 90 assists in a season and the first to do so while playing for two different teams. In the 06-07 season, Thornton had 92 assists and became the third player in NHL history to have back-to-back 90-assist -back seasons. The following season, he had 67 assists to become the third player to lead the NHL for three consecutive seasons. With a goal against the Phoenix Coyotes on April 8, 2011, Thornton became the 78th NHL player to reach 1,000 points. He had his 11th consecutive 20-goal season in the 2010-2011 season. Joe Thornton became the 100th player to play 1,200 NHL games on March 27, 2014 against the Winnipeg Jets. On October 18, 2014 against the Devils, Thornton became the 46th player in league history to have 1,200 points. Adding to that, in the 2015-2016 season, Joe Thornton became the 7th player in NHL history, 36 or older, to have a 60-assist season. He finished tied for 4th in the NHL in scoring with 82 points and helped the Sharks reach the Stanley Cup Final for the very first time. Joe Thornton is regarded as one of the best players to have never won a Stanley Cup. Over his 24-year career, Thornton has played 1,714 games and he's tallied 1,539 career points over that time. Thornton played the majority of his career between the Boston Bruins and the San Jose Sharks before choosing to chase a cup elsewhere. Over two seasons, Thornton decided to try his hand at winning a cup with the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Florida Panthers. However, both of those quests fell short. Naturally, as Thornton got older, his game fell off so much he wasn't even an option for the Florida Panthers in the playoffs playing only one game. While many expected Joe Thornton to call it a career after last season, it appears that isn't the route Jumbo Joe is going to take. It was recently announced that he accepted the role of head of sport for the Spangler Cup once his career ends. So while Thornton appears to have his post-hockey career figured out, he still remains interested in finding a team for his 25th NHL season. Vincent LeCavalier, the Tampa Bay Lightning, 1998. 
Being the first player selected in any draft comes with an insane amount of expectations from the organization to the coaches to the fans and even from the player themselves. To add to this pressure, the Lightning owner at the time proclaimed that Vincent LeCavalier was going to be the next Michael Jordan of hockey. While there will always be some who believe that LeCavalier never lived up to the top draft selection, his production while wearing that Bolt sweater was second to none. With that being said, he did not live up to the owner's hype, finishing his rookie season with 28 points. However, he did improve to 67 points in the 99-2000 season, and Tampa Bay named him the captain on March 1st, 2000 at 19 years of age. This made Vincent LeCavalier the youngest captain in NHL history at the time. However, his time in that captain role was brief. The Lightning took the captaincy away from him in the 2001-2002 season and his performance dropped to 37 points. Fortunately for him, he rebounded in the 2002-2003 season with 78 points and in the 03-04 season, he scored 66 points in the regular season and added 16 in 23 Stanley Cup playoff games to help Tampa Bay win their first ever Stanley Cup since entering the NHL in 1992. The Cavalier's best season came in the 2006-2007 season where he won the Richard Trophy after leading the NHL with 52 goals. He ended the season with 108 points and was named an NHL second team all-star. He scored 92 points in the 07-08 season when he won the King Clancy Trophy for his leadership and humanitarian contributions. The Lightning then signed Vincent LeCavalier to an 11-year contract on July 13, 2008, and he was named captain for the second time on September 18, 2008. LeCavalier scored at least 20 goals in each of his next four seasons. He also scored 32 points in 39 games during the lockout shortened 2012-2013 season, and then Tampa Bay bought out the remainder of his contract. He then went on to sign with the Philadelphia Flyers as a free agent July 6, 2013. Now turning into more of a role player, LeCavalier scored 37 points in 69 games with the Flyers, but in the following season, he dropped down to 20 points and was traded to the LA Kings January 6, 2016. Vincent LeCavalier retired with 949 points in 1,212 NHL games, as well as 56 points in 75 playoff games played. The Tampa Bay Lightning retired his number four on February 10, 2018. Patrick Stefan, the Atlanta Thrashers, 1999. Patrick Stefan began his professional hockey career playing in the Czech Republic, where he scored 9 points in 32 games over two seasons. In 1997, while the Czech League was on break for the Olympics, Stefan signed to play with the IHL for the Long Beach Ice Dogs. The IHL was a minor professional hockey league in the United States and Canada from 1945 to 2001 and served as the alternate farm system to the American Hockey League. Financial instability led to its demise and the remaining teams were merged into the AHL. During Patrick Stefan's partial season in the IHL, he would score 15 points in 25 games while adjusting to the North American style of hockey. After the 97-98 season ended, Stefan would make the decision to sign with the IHL full-time for the 98-99 season, thinking that playing in North America for a full year would prepare him more for the NHL draft. Patrick Stefan's first full season in North America would be positive and negative. He would score a little more than a point per game with 11 goals and 35 points through 33 games played. He would be named IHL Player of the Week and also had a 4 goal 5 point night. However, his season would be shortened by a concussion that would cause him to miss several months and also a chance to play in the World Junior Championships. Despite injury and concussion problems, the Atlanta Thrashers went on to pick Patrick Stefan number one overall in the 1999 NHL entry draft. Stefan had a respectable first couple of seasons in the NHL playing for an expansion team, and with the weight of the franchise on his shoulders, he went on to score 5 goals and 25 points in his first season, and then improving to 10 goals and 31 points through 66 games during his second season. As time would go on, however, injury problems would haunt Stefan, only playing a full season once in his career, and he would never even come close to living up to the expectations of being the first overall pick. During the 2003-2000 season, it appeared that Stefan might have finally been making some progress and some thought he might end up being a late bloomer. 
He had his best season yet, finally playing in all 82 games and scoring 14 goals and 40 points, which was a career high. Unfortunately, during the next season, he would make another step back with more injury problems and would only score 25 points in 67 games played. Although Patrick Stefan had developed into a decent third line player for the Thrashers by this time, Atlanta decided to cut their losses and traded Stefan to the Dallas Stars in the 2006-2007 season. Stefan would go on to play only 41 games for the Stars that year, missing some time due to injury and being a healthy scratch several different times. When his contract expired, Dallas decided not to resign him. Unfortunately for Patrick Stefan, his being a disappointing draft pick is not why he will be most remembered. Many simply remember him for maybe making the biggest mistake in NHL history. On January 4, 2007, late in the third period against the Edmonton Oilers, Dallas was up by one and the Oilers decided to pull their goalie. Stefan, who was on the ice at the time, very skillfully stole the puck and proceeded towards the empty Edmonton net. He was completely alone with no one else near him. But as he reached the empty net, he completely misses it. He literally missed from about one foot away from the net. If that wasn't bad enough, he also lost his footing, fell down, and gave Edmonton a chance on the other end. Alice Hemsky ended up tying the game. Stefan would go on to play in Switzerland, where he only played three games before a serious hip injury caused him to decide that professional hockey was no longer worth the trouble of battling through injuries, and he decided to retire. Thanks for watching our videos. Don't forget to hit that like button, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next video.